Hey everybody, welcome back around to the Blog and Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here with your sports video blog for January 10th, 2014. I got a great blog plan for you. We'll look ahead to the week in college hoops. I'll give you my picks for the four divisional playoff games. We'll talk about Johnny Manziel as well in the NFL as he's proclaimed for the draft, declared for the draft. But first off, I want to start with the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot. Of course, the 2014 class, we see Greg Maddox. Tom Glavin and Frank Thomas going in on the ballot. Three good guys, three typical, I think, first ballot Hall of Famers. Um, Maddox, of course, with the highest percentage, but the other two really deserving to go in. So a good Hall of Fame class. The heartbreak has to go to Craig Biggio. Craig Biggio, a close miss, 74.8%. He missed by two votes of the 500 votes. But the real story isn't about who got in. It's not about who's out. It's about what has gone on with the protests and what's been going on with the voting process. Of course, the big news coming out today, Dan Lebetard, Miami Herald jur journalist, has been stripped of his Hall of Fame vote after he gave his vote to Deadspin.com, which is basically um, a trumped-up sports blogger, um, a very unprofessional, I think, organization. Um, but Dan Lebetard losing his vote, gave it to Deadspin. Deadspin made the vote. Lebetard signed off on it and sent it in. This is kind of a protest. Um, I think I like that Lebetard was protesting. I like what he did with his vote for sure. I wouldn't have sent it to Deadspin.com. Um, if he didn't want to, if if he didn't want to be part of the voting process, he shouldn't have voted at all. That should have been what he was really doing. Just not vote at all. Send in a blank ballot as your protest. Um, but really, Lebetard making a statement, and I think some change is going to come from this. The ultimate changes that I'd like to see done with the voting is I would like to see a, com a compilation of broadcasters, writers, um, former, former players to a degree, some owners, some baseball administrators, and some other higher-ups in baseball form a panel such as similar to the Selection Committee for College um, Basketball's Tournament go into a room in Cooperstown and come out with the Hall of Fame class. And I'd like to see that done in September, then meet in September and October, and then after baseball, before the World Series, release that list. I think it'd be good for baseball. It'd keep baseball interesting. And I think it'd ultimately be a good thing for Major League Baseball to weed out these 500 writers and really remodify what they have going on with their Hall of Fame voting system. All right, that's all I got for that. Now I want to go to the state of, and I'm going to be talking about the state of Johnny Manziel in the NFL. Right now, Johnny Manziel declared for the draft. I think his draft stock is very, very high right now. I think a lot of teams, of course, need a quarterback. I've heard five out of the top eight picks could be looking for a quarterback as much as the first pick in the draft with the Texans. Um, I think he played well in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. He played well down the stretch. He really only had one clunker this year, and that was against LSU. But LSU's throwing out 11 um, NFL-ready defensive players every week. So you're playing against an, the top NFL-caliber defense in college that you can play against. My scouting report on Johnny Manziel is a little bit shaky right now. I think he has um, a pretty overly strong arm for his size. He's about 5'11 and a half. He has a very strong arm for a guy his size. He can get the ball down the field. He has good pocket presence, moves well in the pocket, moves well out of the pocket. The only thing I'd worry about is his reads. If he only get, takes one read and then he's off running like we see with Kaepernick, if he can go through his reads and then make a decision to run, but that's going to come with his offensive line and what he can do there. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes in the draft. Um, and really, the, the big thing that people are talking about is his off-the-field issues. And I think his off-the-field issues should be a non-factor of course, he signed with um, LeBron James's buddy, and who has a very good marketing campaign that Johnny Manziel will be set up with. I think it's good. LeBron, you never see LeBron in trouble. I think it's good for Johnny Manziel to surround himself with people like LeBron, and it's going to be interesting to see if he can stay out of the spotlight enough. He's going to be in the spotlight some, but he's got to stay focused, and Johnny Manziel has to know that he's an NFL quarterback now. And NFL quarterbacks can't be messing around and getting in trouble. He's got to be on that team, and he's got to stay on the field and be productive for the team. The ultimate question is, will he be successful? What kind of quarterback are we looking at for him to be in the NFL? 
ultimately, there's no quarterback really like him, okay? Russell Wilson, yeah, but Johnny Manziel likes to run more. So he's kind of, he's like a small version of maybe a Colin Kaepernick, not as strong of an arm. I think ultimately we could see this guy win a Super Bowl. Um, we could see him, he's going to have to have weapons around him to be good. Um... If Cleveland had a good coach, I would really like to see him go to Cleveland because Cleveland has playmakers, so that'd be exciting to see, but I don't think Cleveland's a good match, no good coach there. We'll see what happens, but I think he will be successful. I think he could be a pro bowler, could be a Super Bowl winner, and ultimately, I think he's just too much of a competitor to not be good. He's going to be good somewhere, he's going to make something happen, and he's going to get on a win streak, and we'll see what happens, but ultimately, I think Johnny Football in the NFL will be a success for sure. All right, we got the NFL division playoff, divisional round playoffs this week. I'm going to get right to it with my picks. First game, I got Saints Seahawks tomorrow at 4:30. Seahawks coming in as an eight-point favorite. I will give the points, and I will take the Seahawks 27 to 17. Colts and Patriots. Patriots come in as a touchdown favorite. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take the Colts in a 31-27 win over the Patriots. Andrew Luck marching on. 49ers, Panthers, 49ers a one-point favorite, so pretty much a push here. I'm going to take the 49ers to win this, and they're going to win it 24-21. to Another late-game field goal by Phil Dawson. And finally, the Chargers and the Broncos. Broncos coming in as a 10-point favorite. I think all the talk about Peyton Manning struggling, all the talk about him throwing big picks, I think he's going to be mad. He's going to take it out on the Chargers, and I see the Broncos winning this game 35-21. to all right, before we go, I want to get to some quick college hoops. North Carolina versus number two Syracuse tomorrow. My orange at the Dome. I got the orange win in this one. I'm taking the orange by 12. My upset alert, the team I want to put on upset alert, Ohio State coming off a big, dramatic loss to Michigan State. Um, I'm going to take Ohio State as my upset alert. Iowa will beat them this weekend, Ohio State going down. And my player to watch this weekend, if you have time, tomorrow at 1230 on NBC Sportsnet. Number number 18, I believe, UMass is taking on – UMass is 13-1. and one. They're taking on St. Bonaventure. And the player to watch is Chaz Williams, the point guard for UMass. He's averaging 15.9 points per game and 7.4 assists per game. Maybe a good point guard that could be coming out and could be a very good point guard in the NBA. We've seen lower-level point guards like a Damian Lillard play well in the NBA, and this guy could be another one. So check out Chaz Williams tomorrow for UMass as they take on St. Bonaventure. Monday we'll be back. We'll go around the shield. Um, Knicks, we'll talk some Knicks and some J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith benched last night. Knicks take down the heat. Good win there. We'll also have some headlines. Next week could be a busy week. We're going to be breaking down the conference championship games. We'll also be looking at possibly an A-Rod suspension finally. Um, we'll see what they're going to make. They're likely to make a decision on that tomorrow or next week, so we'll see what happens with that. A lot to do, a lot of fun stuff coming up in sports. We're getting into the meat of the conference schedule in basketball. NFL slowing down, but we'll be getting into Major League Baseball pretty soon as well, so that'll be a lot of fun. Follow me on Twitter, of course, YankeeBaller415. We're also looking to expand the blog to a more permanent location, maybe getting it on the radio somewhere. I don't know. Anybody has any ideas, throw them at me, and I will take them all into consideration. Comment, question, subscribe to my page. Thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Grill. I'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you then.